Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about how to add lazy load hooks to your code so that users can easily extend it. This is really useful if you're building a Ruby gem where you have things like Rails models or anything else that live inside of there and a user might want to customize the code inside of those classes. So here is an example and this came up yesterday with Nicholas1996ing asking about how he could extend some of the functionality in my refer gem. And there's a few ways to do this. One is he could reopen the class, but that's a little finicky and you have to do that at the right time. There is also the Rails to prepare block that I mentioned that you can run a block of code whenever Rails loads and reloads in development. And you can use that to say, hey, um, let's inject some functionality with a concern into the referral model, for example. There's a better way to do this, and I need to add this feature to the gem to make this even simpler. And let's take a look at this in Rails itself. So if you use active storage or a bunch of other features in Rails, um, you'll notice in some of the files at the very bottom, after they define the class, like this is the active storage blob record, active record model. If we go through the code, we'll see it defines all these methods and things like that. But at the very end, after the class has been finalized, there is an active support run load hooks, active storage blob, active storage blob. So this is the name for the hook. And then this is the um, class that will evaluate the block of code if anyone registered a callback for this. So a run load hooks is basically a way of defining a name and a class and then giving that to anyone who's listening that says, hey, I would like to know when active storage blob is defined so I can you know, change a configuration, override a method, something like that. Um, and this is all defined here in lazy load hooks in active support. So a good example of this is maybe you wanna change the time zone settings in active record. Rather than having to force active record to load, we can then do this lazily and say, hey, whenever active record is loaded, let's change these settings. This is really useful because you might actually have a gem that integrates with active record, but someone might put that in a Rails app that doesn't use active record at all. Um, you know, maybe that's an admin gem or something that you're building that typically depends on active record, but somebody might be using it in a weird use case that you didn't think of, then this is a great way to do it because this is going to only run this block of code right here whenever active record is loaded. If it's never loaded, this never runs. We can also then just drop these run load hooks throughout our code base into uh, the files after the classes are defined. And then that's going to set up those hooks for anyone to drop into and use for whatever purpose they have. And you can also chain these too. So here's action controller base and then action text content. So only after these things are both loaded will we, uh, you know, for example, set the default renderer. So this is super cool and is a really useful feature of Rails, but I wanna show you how we can add it to our own gem so you can see how that works. It is really, really simple. We will go into our models. So app models, refer, we'll go into say referral first. All we have to do, just like in the docs, we say active support, run load hooks. This will be refer, referral, and we'll say refer, referral as our class name. And so our class name up here, refer, referral, is going to match and we'll have our name like so. So then we can drop into every one of these and we can say instead of refer referral, this will be refer visit and visit. <clears throat> and we'll do the same thing here for referral code. Let me grab this line again. Referral code, we'll paste it in and we'll add referral code. So that's it. Now all of our active record models inside of refer will have that set up. We could also go into, um, you know, if we had controllers, we could put those after our controllers, um, you name it. And then if we want to test this out, what we can do is go into our test dummy application. We'll go into config, um, 
probably the easiest. It doesn't really matter. We could go into an initializers. I didn't really want to create a new file. So maybe I will just drop it in here in development. Um, and then all we have to do is say uh, that active support. Um, let me show you the docs on load and you give it a symbol of that name and then the block will be evaluated inside of whatever is given as the object. So for us, we could say on load, refer, referral, or something like that. Maybe, maybe we'll do referral code and we'll have a block and we'll put a binding IRB inside of here. So when the referral code model is loaded, this block will be called. So let's open up a Rails console. And here we can refer referral code to load that model because we're just in a Rails console. It hasn't actually accessed anything there. Um, but when we do this, you'll notice we drop into our binding IRB because that div that class has then been lazily auto-loaded, basically. It's auto-loaded, then the lazy load hooks have run and dropped us into this binding IRB. But remember, this is defined here in our application RB under the Rails application configure block. You would typically put this in an initializer, but these work basically the same. Um, you can define that kind of anywhere at any time. And we can then type self to see what is the context we are currently in. And you can see we're inside of the referral code class. So this allows us to access any of those methods. So referral code, if we had any class methods, we could call those, um, you know, and but we could call, you know, new here and it would then try to create a new referral code because we're at the class level. Um, and so that's where we're gonna be able to drop in and add our own, maybe our own belongs to or whatever there. So let's actually do something useful here. Let's go and say um, def self dot uh, hello world or hello. We'll say it puts hello world and then we can open up our Rails console. If we then say refer, referral code dot hello, we now have a class method defined on this class that doesn't come from the gem, it comes from our extension of it, and this is just evaluating that code inside the class, like you would do with an active support concern. Um, so that's super awesome. Now we have hello as a method, printing out hello world, we could add our own belongs to, we could add you know, um, store accessors for metadata or whatever else we might want to do here. All of that is going to then be defined there in that code base. So if you have a whole bunch of this stuff, you might want to do an include of like the hello world module. And so you might want to define a concern or a module somewhere um, that is included. So all of that code that you've written is contained in one place and you're not just kind of reopening. In a way, this feels like reopening the class. Um, Rails and Active Support's kind of handling that stuff for you. So it's done and executed at the right time. But um, it might feel a little clunky to drop a bunch of code into this block. So it might make more sense to extract a module or a concern in Rails uh, or active support concern uh, and then have that included here. So this is more of a one-liner. You just have this set up on boot um, and you wouldn't typically want to define a lot of code in an initializer or an environment. And that's why you would probably want to extract that out. But if it's only a method or two or a handful of small things, then I don't see the problem of putting that here in one of these lazy load hooks like so. So that's it. Uh, these are really simple. They're really straightforward. You can see there's only the two methods. You call run load hooks whenever your class is defined and it's ready to run the load hooks. And you say on load in the client application that listens for those uh, load hooks and does its work. And that's it. Um, so here you have a couple options, yields the object that run loads hook to block um, and run once will only run that once because uh, very similar to development with the to prepare block, 
when code is reloaded in development, we need to reapply these changes. So we would need to re-include this module or redefine the class if refer referral code had been reloaded. Basically, that's going to get rid of the current version of the constant and redefine it so that we have a fresh copy of it. So we would need to make sure that this runs multiple times um, and you can turn that off if you want. So that's it. That's pretty much everything there. Um, this is just, as you can see in the source code, just kind of saving these to an array for the hook name. And it's got all of its options and stuff and then basically just keeps that around. So it, it keeps the block, uses this execute hook method that's internal that's going to be able to handle those options and run load hooks is similar as well. So it's basically going to uh, keep track of those and uh, reference those load hooks accordingly and execute them. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, definitely recommend checking out this feature. You can see there is not a lot of code for how that works, um, but it's really awesome. I really, really like this feature. And if you're building Ruby gems, it takes almost no effort to drop in one line of code at the bottom of all of your classes to give users the opportunity to hook into your library and customize it to their needs. So I'm gonna go through and uh, basically set these up for everything in the gem. Maybe there's some other stuff that I forgot about, but for the most part, these are all we need. We're gonna cut a new release and we'll now have, now have lazy load hooks for all of those models. And I'm gonna go through all of the rest of my gems and Rails plugins to make sure that we have these set up for all of those as well. And one thing I almost forgot, I've got a guide here on GoRails, which I'll include a link to, and this is a list of all of the lazy load hooks that Rails has. Um, and so you can find these for whatever you know feature of Rails you wanna integrate with. For example, if you want to do something special to add a helper for active job test cases only, you could do a lazy load hook for that, and that could be defined anywhere in your initializers, and it will only actually execute whenever the active job test case class is loaded. So that is fine to define anywhere, even in development or production, and it's not going to run in those cases. It will only run for your tests um, and only run whenever one of your tests actually references the active job test case. So that's really awesome. These are great for extending your Rails apps. Um, and so here's you know another quick example. If you wanna add some multi-tenancy functionality, toss it in a module and then set it up to include itself in active record base whenever um, it is loaded. So that's it, I uh, hope you found this useful. I've really, really come to use these uh, throughout our applications in many different ways whenever we need to customize something. So this is something we'll add to refer, we'll go add it to noticed and pay and all of the other libraries that I work on for Rails so they're easy to extend in the future.